as I continue in my quest to get this old 240D ready for a 3,000 mile road trip, I think in this video, you're gonna to get to see why I consider linkages, throttle related linkages so important on these old diesels. I think it has a lot to do with the amount of vibration that comes from these engines, but you can have some real serious problems if you don't maintain these linkages. And when you get one of these old diesels, one of the first things you wanna do is to inspect them either fix them but be sure and lubricate them getting in the engine compartment and doing a linkage inspection and repair is really important these ball sockets get really sloppy the joints in here get corroded and they need lubrication i've personally had two mercedes old diesels go to full throttle and stick now that can be really scary particularly if you don't know what to do you always want to make sure your emergency stop is working and you always want to make sure that your vacuum shutoff is working do not drive an old diesel with a vacuum shutoff that's not working if the engine should go to full power the only way you can stop it is to turn it off while you're driving and you lose power steering and power brakes. So you really want to pay attention to the linkages on these old diesels. And I'm gonna come in here and inspect every one of them and then I'm gonna lubricate all the pivot points and all the ball sockets. The other thing is you wanna make sure you're getting full throttle. I had somebody get in this car and push on the throttle and it's not quite coming up to full throttle here. You know, it's about a sixteenth of an inch off the stop here, and this is the reason why. Look, this is broken in here. So I need to replace that. I've got some slop in some of these ball joints. So I'm going to go ahead and get this replaced. Then I'm going to start replacing linkages from my old stock and see if I can't tighten up this whole linkage assembly. You can see how loose it is. So there's a number of places these can uh, deteriorate. The rubber can rot and start to separate and crack, and this plastic ball can break apart like you see here, and that'll get really loose. Now we carry these new and used on my website. I've got a good used one, so I'm just gonna replace that right now. So let me show you the good used one I have. It's really nice. See how tight that socket is? The rubber's in real good condition. It's not cracking, it's not separating. So I'm gonna use this one now, just keep in mind when you replace this, there's only one way it can go in. If you put it in like this, notice the angle's going off that way and your linkage isn't gonna line up. So you need to put it on like this. So this part is angled more towards the engine and you can get the linkage installed back in properly. So I'll set that in place and get those two sheet metal screws started. Now, see how tight that is? Look at that. No slop, hardly any play at all in that swivel joint. Now I can go ahead and slide this linkage back in. This doesn't need any lubrication because it doesn't rotate in this little mount. I'll put that in like that. I have to reinstall this little pin. OK, 
Okay. And now I'm going to get the lubrication. We're going to start removing, inspecting, and lubricating each one of these linkages. I like to use a little bit of Scotch Brite pad to just clean these balls a little bit. They get rusty, and you want to get all the crud and the rust off before you lubricate them. This one's still real gummy. And I've used quite a few different types of lubricant over the years to lubricate these linkages. If I take them off and clean them, my lubricant of choice is a synthetic. Whatever you use here needs to be a synthetic. I use this synthetic heavy molly grease. It tends to hold into these ball sockets real well and holds up well to the heat of the engine. That's the key. You don't want to use regular oil, particularly around these plastic parts, the plastic pivot points, because it will deteriorate the plastic. Most of these will snap on by hand, but when they're a little old, a little tight, and haven't been lubricated on that spring clip, you may need to take a pair of needle nose pliers like this and just snap it back into place. All right, that feels good. Now I'm gonna just start here at the front at this cruise control actuator and I'm going to just take off one or two linkages at a time and inspect them, look at the ball sockets for slop or rust, but look at how much play I've got here. And I've got a lot of play in this pivot point too, so maybe I've got a better one of these in my old used part stock. And if I can find better linkages, I will use them. If not, I will have to get some new ball socket ends and replace them because I don't want this much slop in the linkages. This cruise control pivot arm bushing is really worn, see that? So I was able to find one. It's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better. There's a lot less play in it. So I'm using this one, but before I install it, I'll get to that Molly synthetic grease. I'm actually gonna put some up in here so it doesn't push all out the bottom. Okay, there you go. Then I'll install the clip back on there. All right, much better. You never know when you might need some old parts you pulled off a car probably 10 years ago. But I was able to find two linkages a lot better condition than the ones I removed. So we're gonna lube these up. a little tight what happens is that spring clip down in there gets rusty and it won't release the pressure so a little grease in there a little vibration will get that loosened up as long as I can get it on if you have to force it too much to get it on don't use the ball socket it's probably shot there we go all right from here to here I have a lot less movement and slop. You can see that right there as I move it back and forth. Okay, now I'm going to move on to this area right here. <laughs> Look what I discovered after removing these other linkages. I've got a lot of slop in this part right here. Look at that moving. So you can see it's heavily worn there in that center bushing. So what am I going to do about that? Take a look. I've got a spare. And look at how tight that is. And I'm sure some of you that have been watching this video are saying, hey, Ken, all your vacuum hoses and all your 3-2 valves are missing. And that's often the case with these old diesels. They just get pulled off and thrown away. We'll discuss the pros and cons of this in the next video when I go over the whole vacuum system and repair this on this 240D4 speed. And yes, 
240 D four speeds in 1982 and 1983. Did have three two valves like you see here and they also had a VCV valve. What a surprise. I just replaced this linkage rod from my used part stock. Look at how tight that is. See that? Now this is the one I have to find next. Look at how sloppy these original ones are. And that's moving almost a sixteenth of an inch. So when you multiply a thirty-second or a sixteenth of an inch times ten, you've got an awful lot of slop going on in all this linkage before I started repairing it. And that makes it hard for the cruise control. It makes it hard for it to run smoothly at freeway speed. You're going to get probably other issues related to all that slop. But it's a good idea to have tight linkages. Let's see if I can find one of these now. One of the most important linkages is the one that goes down and connects to the lever on the side of the injection pump. You don't want a lot of slop in this one, but look at how sloppy that one is, both ends. So between the two ends, I have well over an eighth of an inch slop. I'm leaving this one ball open so I can trial fit a couple others that I've got here. Here's two used ones I pulled out, so I'm gonna snap those on and check them. Okay, that feels good. Let's check the other end. All right. Let's check this one. Okay, that's got play. So we know this is the one I want to use down there, and we'll loop that one up and put it on. I finished using this ball here for testing and now I can take this linkage and switch it over to this position. That's the correct position. I should warn you, it's easy to get confused, so maybe take some pictures before you begin taking all your linkages apart. Also, during this whole operation, I decided to build a better mousetrap with a better tool that I modified to get these ball sockets off easier. Look at this. Look at how nice that is. It just snaps right off. So I'm going to make this tool available on my website along with that special grease and some lint-free swabs to go along with it. I'm going to switch this one over to here, snap it into place, and now the last one I've got to do is that one I just cut. I'll go ahead and lube these up and snap that one in place. Now compare this linkage operation to what you saw at the beginning of the video. Look at that, there's almost no slop all the way from this point down to that ball that moves the rod to the injection pump and then going over to the firewall right there. Look at that, hardly any slop at all in this mechanism. This is gonna make a lot of difference in how this car runs and shifts. Even a manual transmission will shift smoother with tight ball socket linkages. Now one final thing, when you're all done, you want to make sure that your throttle is not binding. If you got this on wrong, it's going to bind up and not go to full throttle. And then finally, have someone get in the car and push all the way down on the throttle pedal and look down here and make sure that the injection pump is coming all the way to full throttle stop. If not, you may have to adjust some of these linkages. So this is a very important maintenance item. Please do not neglect it.